So I want to bring in as well Stephen Bucci. He's a senior fellow on Homeland Security and Defense Issues from the Heritage Foundation. Stephen, thank you for joining us. I just noticed a tweet online saying that you know when you log on to Twitter and there's a country or a city trending, it's likely a terror attack. It's the unfortunate situation, Stephen. What do you make of this? Uh, well, it's, a, it's an unfortunate artifact of, of what's going on right now. I mean, obviously, we don't know who's doing this, what their motivation are, you know, and, and anything would be speculation, but it's pretty likely that it's a terrorism event. You know, this kind of stuff doesn't happen routinely in Germany. Uh, it's not likely just to be crime. And, uh, uh, yeah, you, I think that, that observation in that tweet is dead on. Yeah, it's, it's a big worry. When you're looking at the profile of people who launch these attacks, there doesn't seem to be one uniform, consistent profile, does there? Uh, well, I mean, people don't like to hear it, but uh, of late, the, the, the unifying factor is they all at least have been somewhat radicalized, uh, a lot of them online, some of them with direct connections. But, but recently, that's, that's Stephen, not necessarily sorry, what's going on here, and until we know that, you right. know, it wouldn't be wise to speculate. The attack in Nice, so far, it's been my understanding that that man was not in any way radicalized. They couldn't find any sort of intelligence to indicate that on his computer or his files at home. Have you heard anything further on the Nice attack and the connections there? No, nothing that that's not out in in the general public. It. it uh, you know, based on the fact that, uh, you know, his own background, it lends one to believe that, you know, he might have had some sympathy with, with other attacks. But no, there's, there's not hard evidence to that as yet. Mm -hmm. We're continuing to follow the situation outside of Munich at the shopping mall where there's been an attack. We had heard that there was possibly another attack that appears not to be the case. Stephen, when you're talking about security and terrorism, why, up until this week, Germany has somehow remained a pretty much safe haven, free from attacks. Why has that been, and why are they being attacked now? Well, I, mean, I think in the past, it's a combination of the fact that they have a very strong intelligence capability, a very strong police and counterterrorism capability, which makes them a harder target. But uh, they've also been, you know, pretty darned open to refugees and people like that so they haven't done a lot to really you know tick off the terrorists if you will but now it appears that they're getting lumped in with everybody else in the west and unfortunately sometimes these guys don't don't necessarily need a justified uh reason that you and i would agree with they just decide they're not like us so we're going to attack them yeah, um, we're watching live images coming down. People appear to be exiting the mall, uh, running away. There are police on the scene um, and pretty much impossible at this moment to get anywhere near downtown Munich, according to people who are within this vicinity. They've shut down the subway systems. They've asked people to avoid public places. And we've also heard accounts that the people inside that mall Many of them are unable to actually leave their shops. They've asked to actually stay where they are. Police trying to determine who is behind the attack, what the motive may have been, and exactly where the shooters may have gone. The, the Facebook page of the Munich Police Department posting an eyewitness account saying that three people with firearms were seen at the mall, and now police asking everyone to remain in place. When you look, Stephen, at the current outlook on terrorism, 10 years ago, five years ago, and today. How has that landscape changed? Well, I think it's changed a great deal. 10 years ago, all we were really worried about was al-Qaeda. Uh, and you know, now with, with ISIS, both directly and indirectly through their radicalization processes online, have opened up a can of worms so that you know anyone anywhere could suddenly pop up and, and decide to pick up uh, the, the flag, so to speak, and, and take a, a, what we would consider a terrorist action, uh, that spreads it pretty broadly over the world. And, and those guys are almost impossible to stop preemptively because they, there's no trail, there's no signals to the good guys that they're about to do this sort of thing mm. uh, until they actually start shooting. So uh, this is, it, it fortunately... That you know they don't normally do the the kind of 9/11 level spectacular stuff, but as we saw in Paris, 
and uh, in Orlando and then in Nice, uh, even a lone person can actually do some stuff that's pretty darn uh, spectacular as far as numbers of casualties in a very short time. Stephen Bucci, a senior fellow in Homeland Security and Terrorism from the Heritage Foundation. Stephen, thank you for your thoughts and for joining us.